Good morning and welcome to Judaism Today. As a kid, I always wondered, and even as an adult, I always wondered, how is it possible the Jews sin so much in the desert? You know, you see the people living with miracles, the man and the and the bear Miriam, the, the bread falling from the sky, the Ananiah are covered. How is it possible the Jews in the desert sin and sin and sin? How, how can we understand people who lived with miracles to repeatedly have issues with finding God in their midst? And I had an incredible insight from the Svas MS in this week's podcast. He says as follows, and he asks a different question. He says, the Torah says the farmer is going to ask in the Shemitah year, what am I going to eat in the Shemitah year? So God says, I'll command my blessing in the sixth year so that you could eat in the seventh year. In other words, the farmers relied wholly and totally on their crops and their produce for eating. And so God says, don't worry about it. It's true you're not going to be able to work and not be able to raise crops. I'll help you the year before. You'll front load your crops and that'll be enough to help you survive. And this Fasema cites a Noam Elimelech, interesting, who asks a fascinating question. He asks, what kind of question is this? Of course God can provide for them. So he has a unique insight on their question. He says, what really was the farmer's question? He says, the farmers were, one, were bothered as follows. He says, the farmers understood that it would take a miracle of God for them to be able to survive. After all, they were not producing it. So, not every generation is worthy of miracles. What will be when you have a generation that's not worthy of miracles? How will they survive? And the answer they're given by the Torah is God will command their blessing. In other words, he'll weave into the natural course of their farming and of their daily lives the miracle itself, which will be the course of their survival. And this will be a sort of miracle and nature rolled into one. That was what the farmer's answer was. And this really, says the Sfas MS, is the central message of Shemitah. In that, really we are no, we are meant to know, that as Jews, that miracles and nature are one. There's nothing more miraculous than nature itself, as is well known. Anyone that studies nature, how does food come from the ground at all? How do we breathe? All these things are are. are Nay, all of the aspects of nature are miraculous. And the purpose of Shemitah was to remind us that as Jews, the nature is in fact miraculous. And as Jews, it's more than that. God entrenches his miracles in us such that our, na our nature is more profoundly miraculous. And that we live with God. And that there are years in which we won't plant, but we'll still survive and it'll look like nature. But really, it's God carrying us through. And to me, when I heard this, I understood that this is how it's possible to confuse, to, for the Jews to have sinned in the desert. It was the banality of miracles. They lived with miracles every day. It was ongoing, and they came to the point that miracles in nature were one. And they stopped seeing them almost as miracles. And our job is the inverse. Our job is to see the miracles in the natural. And this is the essential point of Shemitah, says the Sfas Emes. When we can see, when we can live with God in it within nature, but see the miraculous, the miraculousness of it, then we have a nace, which means we live in a not only miraculously, but nace also means to be uplifted. Then we're living in an uplifted way because we recognize that God is walking with us each and every day. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Judaism Today. If you did, please make sure to follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or check into our podcast, wherever podcasts are listened to, and we look forward to hearing from you more.